Hello, and welcome to Courageous Doctors, the new show for you and your doctor. On this show, we're going to be talking about Obamacare updates, interesting healthcare news around the world, and special health and safety tips. Now let's begin. Star Ledger says that New Jersey passes the New Jersey Insurance Market Preservation Act. This is going to replace the tax. As you know, President Trump had the tax removed on Obamacare. Now, Governor Murphy wants to put a tax back so that everybody, it'll force everybody in the state to still buy health insurance. He's going to use that money if he can, if he can get permission from the feds for a backup to like a catastrophic fund. Now, the uh, New Jersey governor also is, has signed into a bill um, a law that will prevent people from getting charged unexpected out-of-network procedures. What this basically means is that when you go to the hospital, for example, and you think you're in network and you think, you know, you go to a hospital covered by your insurance, it's in network, but not all the doctors or procedures are covered, and you walk out of there with a $50,000 bill, and you go, what gives? I, this is my hospital. So he's passing a law that, at least in New Jersey, that's no longer going to be allowed. How does that affect me? Well, I'm, as you know, a general pediatrician. It probably won't affect me so much. I don't do procedures. I just refer. But it's still important for me to make sure that patients um, know what insurances I belong to, to me help them find out when I refer them to doctors or send them to hospitals that it's in their plan. Now, beyond that, it's out of my control, but that's what the governor's there trying to do. Let's see, Washington Post, this is interesting, the Health and Human Service uh, Commissioner has made new rules for the Obamacare, the ACA plans, that now gives the states much more control. It, what does this come down to? What this really means is, you know how Trump's been trying to kill Obamacare forever. So what this basically means is that now the states uh, have the latitude to have cheaper insurance that's not only for three months, it can be expanded to uh, one year now, that doesn't include all the things Obamacare included. In other words, you may not have pregnancy care. You may not have newborn care. You may not have mental health care. You may not have all the drugs covered. Like Obama had a cap on drugs so you wouldn't, you know, mortgage your life pension to buy your medicine. All of that can be gone if the state sells you a cheap policy. Is that a good idea or not? I don't know. It took us a long time to live with Obamacare. We're going to have to live with these cheap state insurance things. Of course, if your employer, you know, um, has a good plan, that's one thing. But they're also saying now, what if you want to change jobs and you try to change jobs and you have like a, a chronic illness or a catastrophic illness, which, by the way, also may no longer pre-existing may also no longer be covered. But let's say you want to change jobs. Uh, you better make sure your new insurance and new employer covers your condition or you're going to be using your life savings. So all these things are, are, are in the, uh, in the you know, wind now, and we're not sure how it's going to work out. Now, the um, CNN went on to say that the CBO is predicting that, remember, we were talking about new plans, but with the old exchanges, they're all going to go up 15%. Of course, people will still be on their subsidies if they have them. Um, but this may not be the same percentage going up all over the country. For example, it could be as high in Baltimore as 36%. And the CBO was quoting that somebody who was paying $456 a month could be paying as much as $622 a month. That's Baltimore, but that's an example of what we may see next year. So. You know, the, you better hope if you're on the exchanges, you better hope you have subsidies. Now, let's see. Uh, moving on to lowering drug costs. As you know, this is a major, major goal of President Trump. Everybody's all over this. Congressional hearings, if you've been watching C-SPAN, everybody's on top of this. The HHS, Human Health Services Director, uh, they're all concerned. As you know, what happens now is that most of our drugs are generic. 85, 95% of our drugs are generic. So the major large cost of all that research and development for these very expensive drugs, you're only talking about 10% of the market. And, and that's where people get upset because they're sold more cheaply in Europe or Canada. Um, 
but most of it's generic. So why, if we're dealing with generic, what's going on? Why is it so expensive? Well, there are some drugs that aren't generic and they have no generic to bid them out. There are a lot of, uh, uh, there's only a few companies that do most of the big generics, unless you're getting them from overseas. And what happens is that they may not have the money to invest in new drugs to outbid other drugs so that you still end up having expensive drugs. But generic's still probably the best way to go. Um, the Congress is trying to keep these companies from not outbidding themselves. Sometimes a hedge fund gets a hold of these companies and something that was $40 is now $4,000 like naloxone to save you from an opioid overdose, although they're working on getting that back to, I hear, $75 now. But uh, remember the EpiPen with Mylan Company went from 100 up to $600 to save your life if you have uh, allergy to a nut or something. And, and people with nut allergies couldn't afford it. Um, I've heard as much as half of the people that are on insulin aren't even taking their insulin on time. Insulin, you know, went from 300 to 900. So who's driving up all these costs? That's what Trump's trying to figure out, the president. But these are things going on. But the, um, here's the thing. We were hoping that Medicare could directly negotiate rates in order to try to get the drug prices down. And we know that CMS, the Center for Medicare, which is the which Trump's arm for controlling Medicare and their cost and pricing, it cannot directly negotiate, and Trump's not going to allow them to because that's some kind of that's just the way the the rule was written on Medicare Part D that the government can't interfere with interstate commerce and negotiations, but it's trying to force third party payers working for Medicaid patients to force the uh, benefit managers of these large uh, companies that distribute drugs for all the different insurance companies from all the different pharmacies, forcing them to deliver the drug at the same cost to a patient who maybe it wasn't covered or they had a large copay as the cost would be after rebates to the insurance companies. And in fact, the HHS is trying to get rid of insurance companies, uh, Trump's Trump's guy, uh, as are there, the health human service guy, uh, uh, secretary guy. But the, um, the CMS, which is the Center for Medicare that's directly dealing with insurance companies that are handling Medicare uh, expenditures, he wants them to at least make sure, the third party payers to make sure that a patient will not have to pay over what the rebate cost is. We'll see what happens there. Now, let's talk about uh, whether some of this stuff is legal or not. Let's go on to other things. For example, is it legal for CMS to uh, tell a third-party payer uh, what a uh, drug should cost or not? Uh, there's been other things in the states where they've attempted to get involved in insurance. And in one case where they tried to lower the cost uh, in Maryland, the... Um, the uh, federal courts, the Fourth Circuit, struck down the Mar uh, Maryland law saying that it's a violation of the, of the Commerce Clause in the Constitution, Interstate Commerce Clause, that one state cannot tell a, a drug company in another state what to charge its patients in the state of Maryland. They struck that down. Maryland can't do it. So that would have been an easy way, but states can't do that. Another thing is uh, another court blocked down a law in Ohio they were trying to take, you know, the federal funds go for Planned Parenthood and, you know, the Republicans are, were all up in arms, uh, cut out Planned Parenthood so they stop abortions, even though very little of Planned Parenthood money goes for abortions and it does a wonderful job with all kinds of women's health stuff, 95%. Ohio said, and you know who the Ohio governor is, the guy was trying to run for president, so he, he got it under his wind to get his legislature to say, oh, well, we're going to stop abortions. We're not going to let any of the federal Planned Parenthood money go to abortions. It's going to come to us and we're going to redirect it. The court said no. They struck that down. Um, all right, let's talk just a little bit more on pricing uh, the health care cost to consumers. The um, Energy uh, Commerce Committee had a hearing, as I mentioned before, and they actually talked to the Surgeon General about what was happening to control these costs and what was happening is the FDA, the federal drug, are they going to make it easier to get generic drugs through, less regulation? Um, are we going to 
uh, deal with these benefit managers and try to make sure that any rebates they get actually go back to the consumer and not just into the insurance company. And um, it was a very lively debate, and stay tuned on it. Basically, uh, nobody really knows how we're going to get to the benefit managers. Uh, nobody really knows how we're going to lower costs to the consumer. And basically, when you go into a pharmacy, if your drug company, if your insurance company doesn't cover it, you know, uh, you just don't know what the out-of-pocket is or what you're going to end up with. But stay tuned to uh, what the Congress is doing. They're all over the Surgeon General. They're all over CMS, the Center for Medicare. They're all over these benefit management companies. And they're, they're really... Trump's really on this too, the president. They really want to lower drug costs. Let's see, uh, Bloomberg News, and this is interesting, reminds us of other hidden costs in healthcare. And this is something I personally would have never thought of. Who would have thought of uh, my kids dying, get me a helicopter ride uh, to the nearest trauma center, uh, which may be, you know, 50 miles away or something. And you go there, save the kid's life, and get a bill for like $40,000. I mean, uh, they said here the average cost $49,800, and the insurance only covers $6,700. Uh, there's an out-of-pocket expense. I wonder how Governor Murphy would handle that with New Jersey transportation. Uh, is the helicopters in New Jersey now, with the new law, the patient can no longer get that bill? We'll have to see. Um, This is a very, very disturbing problem, and I'm taking my time to figure out how to tell it to you. Um, let me just tell you what the problem is. There's something called public charge. Okay, people, listen carefully to this. This is not going to affect you. It's just food stamps and Medicaid, but you know what's going on with immigration. We got families being separated, young babies being separated from their moms, people being scared these roundup ICE police just throwing people out of everywhere. And I'm not saying they're, they're doing the wrong job. I mean, they're legally throwing people out that are illegal. But you know what's going on. The country is torn apart. You either want to get the immigrants out or you want to leave them here. It's not my job to argue that. But this is important, and you have to understand it. Who would have thought that you can use as one of the ways to take a legal immigrant, a child legally here, whose parents are illegal, put them, and this is congressional quarterly, from the congressional quarterly, put them on Medicaid or food stamps, which is called public charge, and that now allows the president to have them removed from the country. How scary is that? Pretty scary. So we'll have to see what happens. I mean, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. That's not my job. I'm only reporting the news. Just realize it's one more thing to throw in the burner. If you want to get... Uh, illegal parents out of the country, even if the kid's legal. You know, if, he's, if he has to eat, he's going to get thrown out. You know, you just hope your kid doesn't have to eat, I guess. All right, let's see. Uh, Star Ledger. Oh, this is interesting. Let's, positive note. The governor signs an earns, uh, earned sick leave, uh, paid sick leave, finally, for at least governor employees. We should have paid sick leave for everyone. It's so unfair. People can't leave work to come and see me in the office. I fought for this for years. It's just terrible. Other people do a better job. But the governor at least signed it for federal employees. Basically, what happens is for every 30 hours you work, you get one hour paid sick leave. You can get a max of 40 hours a week equal to five days off that's paid, you know, to go to your doctor, not, not just for vacation. You know, it's, it's to go take care of your child, family member, grandparent, whoever it is. And... Um, I really hope this becomes mandatory for, for everyone. Uh, I know in my office, I've always been very gracious to my workers. Somebody's sick, go. Take care of your little ones. I don't want somebody working for me if they're worried their, their kid is sick or their parents are sick. We'll cover you. Go. We'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. I just don't understand why we all can't do that. And I'm really happy that the governor's made that decision. Waxton is a full body unisex studio. We specialize in hard wax, which is gentler on the skin. We do 
all types of waxing from head to toe. You can come in with your friends, so you have the, the moral support. We have hors d'oeuvres. You do have to have a minimum of eight people for that party, and you would schedule that. Everybody is looking for a hand to hold and then someone to share the experience with, so you can look that up on our website. We have prenatal waxing. We take a little bit more time with the new moms, and a lot of people will schedule that once they hit their second trimester. We do have a waxing membership. It's set up just like a gym membership. It's for Brazilians, it's $45 a month, and you come in just like you would go to the gym. It comes out automatically, and you just show up for your wax. We have several memberships for different services. We also have wax packages. The phone number is 973-542-8442. The website is www.thewaxden.com. We have 24-hour online booking. Come to the Wax Den. We wax it all. Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years, and we are thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists, and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move on to other healthcare news now. Um, and you know, as we do, if we always do every month, we start off with major recalls. CNN uh, talked about eggs being recalled. Uh, they have salmonella. That's the Rose Acre Farms. There are nine states involved. Now, I don't know, if it, I don't know how you do it, but when I buy my eggs, um, it's sometimes hard to tell where they come from. So you may have to look up on the Internet because, like, Rose Acre Farms has 20 or 30 egg distributors that put it out for them under different names, so you just have to double-check. CBS News, the romaine lettuce, you've all heard about that. We've been reporting it for months with E. coli. Really bad stuff. What they recently found was, get a load of this, this was in Yuma, Arizona, if you remember. The irrigation ditch where the uh, lettuce was being grown was infected with E. coli. I don't know. I guess somebody didn't clean out the irrigation ditch. Just terrible. People died. People died. Uh, Oh, here's a scary one for you. New Jersey uh, Department of Health. I got a uh, updated bulletin. I, I get those public health bulletins. Kellogg's Honey Smack Cereal, Salmonella. Figure that one out. Is your kid eating Kellogg's Honey Smack Cereal? Better stop him or he'll be in the bathroom. CNN, Del Monte recalls vegetable trays, cyclospora, nasty stuff. Cato Foods recalls cut melon slices, salmonella, watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe. There's a national warning. Do not buy cut melon slices, not in your fruit salad, nowhere. Don't do it. Um, here's one, CBS News, recalled ground beef with plastic parts in it. Plastic parts, nasty. All natural Laura's lean beef and JBS ground beef Angus chunk. Pretty bad. CBS News, measles in New York. Lovely. Actually, the county's around New York. Uh, and guess what? The New Jersey State Department of Health says it's in South Jersey, in uh, some of our uh, lower counties in South Jersey, measles. USA Today says that this year's past flu, I think we've reported this before, was the deadliest in many years. Oh, let's get on to ticks. Okay, this is some nasty stuff. I know you're all afraid of ticks. The Lone Star Tick can cause deadly food allergies to animal milk and red meat. So you get bit by this tick, and then you die when you eat uh, dairy products or milk or, or meat. Nasty. Uh, another kind of tick causes paralysis. Uh, you, you get paralyzed, you pull the tick off, you can move again. Where are these things coming from? Another long hair tick carries a deadly virus so far only to sheep. All right. USA Today, the first case of keystone virus. Keystone virus in humans reported, reported in Florida. It's mosquito transmitted and it can cause encephalitis. 
Keystone virus. So now we got another mosquito bug. CBS News, Idaho, first case of plague in years. Now, you guys remember plague? We've talked about this before. That's what wiped out half of Europe in the uh, mid 13, 1400s, up to 1600s, took London down everywhere. Uh, so, welcome to Idaho. Um, let's move on to health and safety tips now. NBC Nightly News, the FDA is banning bulk quantities of pure liquid powder caffeine. For all you caffeine drinkers, myself included, you know, you're, you're allowed up to four cups of coffee a day, and there's uh, a lot of debate about how healthy that really is for you and what can do or not do. But get a load of this. One teaspoon of this pure liquid powder coffee, one teaspoon is where it has as much caffeine as 28 cups of coffee. And one teaspoon is lethal. Nasty. CNN says that um, there's now animal waste uh, found in makeup that was counterfeited. So if you're, uh, for all you people buying makeup from well-known name brands, that's actually counterfeit. Uh, you may have uh, rat poop in there or something that's irritating your face. CNN, Chicago Tribune, lead in Chicago tap water. Three out of ten homes tested has lead in it. Man, it's bad. We can't even drink water anymore. This is bad stuff. CBS News, synthetic marijuana causes three deaths from bleeding. Now, let me just ask you guys something. Not for nothing. Who the hell's going to buy synthetic marijuana when now anybody can buy legal marijuana? It's all over the country, or at least it's becoming legalized. I mean, you know, it used to be, you know, you go to jail for marijuana even though everybody smoked it, but... Who would buy synthetic marijuana? I, I just don't, I don't see that and then die from bleeding out. Uh, guess why it was, uh, guess how you bleed? Because it has rat poison in it. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, in case you wanted a name, it's called Spice K2 or Herbal Incense Potpourri. In case you're into uh, Herbal Incense Potpourri. Wall Street Journal, um... Legislation to uh, remind drivers to look in their back seat. Uh, you know, some people, it, it's been really tragic. Kids have died in their back seat because parents leave. Sometimes parents will get to work. I've had parents, uh, y you know, that drive to work and just tell me, you know, I'm sorry, Barry, that I was late. I had to turn around and go back because my kid was in the back seat. You know, the kid's sleeping, nice kid. You know, the kind of kid you want doesn't make any noise, you know. Maybe uh, they can, like, tie a jingle around his wrist or something. But they actually have this alarm now in the car they're trying to make mandatory that goes off when, um, when the kid's still back there. Remind you to look back and see he's there. Um, let's see. CBS News. Oh, boy. Uh, they, I, we have talked about some real doozies. And I have to tell you, that I'm still being surprised. Uh, that this is just incredible. Okay, teenagers are now burning each other's arm by spraying deodorant on them. <laughs> I guess it causes frostbite because the deodorant is cold or something. Uh, okay. Um, here's one from Reuters: Hair products used by children contain toxic chemicals. And that's the Journal of Environmental Research. Hair products for children contain toxic chemicals. I, I, I'll tell you a little aside. Uh, here's a mom that came into my office yesterday, and uh, she came back as a follow-up, and she said, oh, gee, Barry, you know, you were actually right. I would have never thought about it. You know, reporting to the news to you guys all the time, I read this stuff. And I had told her a couple months ago when she was passing out all the time uh, that just check her hairspray and make sure it doesn't have a chemical she changed hairsprays and she stopped passing out. And she just told me yesterday. So this stuff's real. Let's see. CBS News. The FDA is now warning that dietary supplements called sunscreen pills. Sunscreen pills. Now, really, let, let's be serious. How many of you are going to go out and friggin' take a pill to not get sunburned? Have you ever heard anything so stupid? 
But people are doing it, and there's, and there's now a warning from our Federal Drug Administration that it does not protect you. What are their names? Gliso Dens Advanced Skin Brightening Formula, Napa Valley Biosciences SunSafe Treatment, Pharmacy Direct Sol Solara Care, Synergize Synergetic. Really, give me a break. Okay, CBS News. The FDA bans teething products with benzocaine because they cause death from methemoglobinemia. Uh, methemoglobinemia is a condition where um, that you get similar to like with cyanide poisoning where um, you, you can't get oxygen on your red blood cells or you can't remove it. Anyway, the oxygen doesn't work and you suffocate and die. Um, to be honest with you, I, I know we're not allowed to use it. This, is, this was your Ambisol, you know, your, uh, all, all your teething products uh, that we all used for years. To, uh, it, we had, they took away the benzocaine I used to put in the ear. Balshin loam, Moralgan, all those things. You know, a kid has an earache, and, and I, I don't have benzocaine for the ear anymore, and now I don't have benzocaine. They're up all night, you know, screaming. I, I, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, look, legally, I have to tell you, do what the FDA says and don't do it. But if I can just tell you as a seat-of-the-pants old-timer pediatrician that I've been around practicing over 35 years, I was with my dad, who was an old timer over 50 years. A lot of experience. A lot of my friends, I have never heard of this. I don't know where they come up with these things, but you know, obviously, I don't use it because it says not to. But you know, there's a. It, to me, there's some common sense in medicine, and you know, you don't want to use something that's going to hurt somebody, of course. But being careful, using a little bit. To me, you know, I've never seen it, and uh, now kids have to scream all night in pain in their ear and their teeth. I don't know, I, 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 I just don't see it, but that's what they say. All right, um, CBS News, pools, hot tubs, water playgrounds, contaminated with cryptosporidium, Legionnaire's disease, and pseudomonas. Uh, now that I totally made you comfortable for your next swim party, sorry about that. CBS News, clothing is now pre-treated with permethrins for ticks. Deets, picaridin, oil of lemon eucalyptus. That, uh, that lemon eucalyptus is really great. I, I got to be honest with you. I went to visit my daughter in St. Martin, uh, which is the main center, the epicenter for dengue fever and, and chittanooga fever, a chikungunya fever, like these really horrible fevers, worse than Zika. And, you know, they can kill you. Horrible, horrible fevers uh, and things. And I had that lemon, tree balm stuff, eucalyptus I sprayed on myself because I didn't want to use the DEET and permethrin. I didn't have one mosquito bite, and I was in the heart of the worst dengue in the whole world, and I didn't have one mosquito bite. So this stuff really works. Let's see. Um, Business Insider. The United States is still low in many medicine. Uh, I happen to work with hospital pharmacy committees and uh, it really is a problem. I watch as these wonderful, wonderful pharmacists uh, do just a yeoman's job going all over the country, beg, borrowing, and, and pleading to just get necessary medicines. It's just incredible in this great country why we can't have all the medicine we need. But there really are shortages, and we just change things, substitute things. We're always trying to get things. But IV solution, epidural stuff for when you're, like, going to have a baby, even EpiPens, it's, uh, it's just amazing what, the, what they have to do to get some of this medicine. Well, here's one for you, popular science. Have you ever heard of thunder fever? Uh, this is that thing where you have a thunderstorm, and it kicks up all the pollens that are in the ground and makes them in very small sizes, and these pollens then get down into an asthmatic's lung and kill them. Nasty. So I, I never would have, I mean... I know my asthmatic patients do worse after storms and all, and I thought it's just humidity and, you know, but I never would have thought of this, this thunder fever. USA Today, pesticide residues high on strawberries. Well, that's what I eat every day, strawberries. That's not too good. Um, although the uh, United States Dietary Association says that it's still safe by FDA standards, 
pesticides on spinach, nectarines, apples, grapes. I don't know. Uh, you know, you can't stop eating. Uh, what are you going to do? But Fox News, no low till a banned painkiller still used in Spain, uh, generic name meta metamazole, nolotil. It poisons the bone marrow, should not be used anymore. So if you're in Spain, don't take it as a painkiller. Star Ledger, the American Lung, says that our Jersey air um, is better for soot and dust, but still bad for ozone. And that's not great because I'm sitting here now in the middle of a heat wave of over 100 degrees the next five days, uh, which, of course, is a major ozone alert. And uh, New Jersey is one of the worst in the country for that. So that's not good. Um, here's an interesting statement. People magazine, they come up with fun stuff. Don't feed your dogs beer and nuts. Beer and nuts. So if you're at a bar with your dog, don't give them beer. Don't give them onions, don't give them grapes, and don't give them chocolate. Uh, Star Ledger says that the, uh, this, this is important, you know, we still see crib death occasionally, not nearly as much since babies are on their backs and sides. Uh, and we've reported in the past about people that don't have proper beds. There's an association in New Jersey that's sending them home with these ready-made boxes to keep baby safe, uh, baby safe boxes. But the New Jersey Sit Center wants you to know that it has a teaching app, and, and for all new parents, I think it's wonderful. You should certainly use it. Uh, let's get to some fun stuff now. Food Network, 10 things not to eat because you don't know who touched them. Oh, this is nasty. Don't eat at buffets. You don't know who touched them. Don't eat sliced lemons at your bars. You don't know who touched them. Don't eat raw oysters, raw sprouts, undercooked ground beef. Undercooked ground beef, seriously? Sushi, uh, that's going to get a lot of people upset. Raw milk, bulk bends, packaged lunch, lunch meats because they might be spoiled, and pot lucks because you just don't know who touched them. I would have never thought about that. Uh, I'll tell you one terrible story. Uh, uh, you know, I hate to say it. I, I was holding my, uh, this little puppy my daughter had, a Yorkie, and I was in a ski resort, and I was waiting for her inside. She was out with her friends skiing. And I guess there's a point. It's not just people. The dog got loose and ran through the salad bar. And I just grabbed the thing, but, you know, I, I just got out of there faster. I think they threw me out, but um, hopefully they changed the salad bar. Uh, or Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, here's another interesting thing. I, uh, my, my, my whole uh, family and their in-laws and everything, they were down um, in Miami Beach recently. And uh, I had gone down there briefly to, to see my daughter graduate. And it's just a personal story, talking about sushi. They went into a sushi bar, and they ate, uh, I, I wasn't there, they ate raw crabs, and they all got something terribly ill uh, uh, from, um, it, it's a similar illness called Vibrio that, uh, it, it, that gives you cholera. Uh, theirs was called Parahemolyticus. There's another one, Vulnificans. We've reported on this before, where you swim in the waters, and this Vibrio from the oysters and shellfish can get into your skin, tattoos or breaks in your skin and kill you. And, uh, but you can eat it also. And uh, this wasn't fulnificans or cholera. This was parahemolyticus, but it made them all terribly ill. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, let's just end up with a couple more really fun things now. Uh, food Network, foods to be refrigerated that you may not have thought of. Uh, did you realize sliced melons and tomatoes have to be refrigerated? I guess you would, but I'll give you that one. How about pie after being out for two hours? There you go. Cooked corn on the cob, not because it spoils, because it's, it's only good for two days in the fridge. Tortillas. Who would have thought that? You refrigerated tortilla? Give me a break. Opened maple syrup. Open a bottle of maple syrup, got to refrigerate it. Ketchup, jelly, eggs, soft cheese, Frosted cupcakes, natural peanut butter, and butter nuts have to be refrigerated. Uh, okay, here's one for you. The best plant-based proteins. We always worry about eating proteins, and we're always asking people for advice, like, you know, tell me what is going to nourish me. Like, I know for myself, 
when I got uh, terribly ill with a lot of food allergies, um, I had to go off gluten and dairy products. I was just starving and very weak. I ended up going on quinoa, and I've been subsequently finding safe veggie proteins I can eat. And so I'm always interested. Best plant-based proteins, soy, quinoa, that's what I eat, quinoa, lentils, uh, cheese seeds, uh, tofu, almonds, black beans, tempeh soy, pumpkin seeds, peanut butter, and nutritional yeast. Best plant-based proteins. Uh, we all know tea has an advantage over coffee with its uh, antioxidants. My son only drinks tea now. I can't even get him to drink coffee. And, oh, I'll end with this one. This is uh, what you always wanted to know. Like, what would be the question you'd ask every famous nutritionist or cook or whatever? Uh, you would say, what do you keep in your kitchen? Right? That's a famous question. Well, here's what they keep in their kitchen. Food Network says, avocado oil spray. I would have never thought of that. Avocado oil spray. I don't even think I've ever heard of that, avocado oil spray. <laughs> Eggs. Well, yeah, okay. We all have eggs. Blueberries, lemon, lime. I mean, that sounds natural. Nut butter, though. How many of you have nut butter in your fridge? Oats. Pesto. Do you all have pesto? Olive oil, cottage cheese, and canned tuna. There we have it. Thank you all for being, uh, spending this time with us again. I've enjoyed seeing you. Enjoy. If if you're seeing this after July 4th, if before it, enjoy and have a nice July 4th. If I don't see you till the end of the summer, enjoy the summer. As always, we welcome your comments. We'll share them online and have a good day.